Hey gang, and welcome to this Dueling Rabbits Productions video about drawloom weaving. Today, we are going to do something a little different and talk about common cotton warp yarns, their suitability for different kinds of cloth, and considerations for set and design. In the second half of this video, I'm going to offer some tips and tricks I have found helpful when weaving on the drawloom with finer threads. We all do it. We look at our stash and wonder what to make next. Maybe we want to try a new structure on our draw looms, or have a particular need for tea towels, pillowcases, or napkins. Maybe we have a lot of cones of something we'd like to get rid of. It can be challenging, especially for new draw loom weavers, to know where to start. My hope is that this video will give an idea of the vast possibilities offered by just a few common threads we often already have on hand. These are the yarns I use most often in my own draw loom weaving, which leans heavily towards damask and textiles with a plain weave ground. Although I've warped with wool and intend to try silk and linen singles one of these days, it seems I always come back to cheerful, colorful, unmercerized cotton yarns for my draw loom projects. This is 8-2 cotton, relatively inexpensive and widely available. Here is 16-2 cotton, a real workhorse and the most versatile yarn there is, in my opinion. It's probably the one I use most often for draw loom warps. Finally, 32 cotton. The dyed stuff is getting a little hard to find, but it is well worth seeking out for the fine detail it affords us. Now, all of these work great as weft stuff, but I do love a linen weft. Number 16 linen singles and 16 2 plied line linen, depending on what I'm weaving. Let's look at all of these in a bit more detail. Here's the 8 2 cotton, the thickest cotton I've ever used on my draw loom. It clocks in at a little over 3,000 yards per pound. For damask, I pair it with itself, cotton, or 16 2 linen. The only structure I've woven with it so far is 5 end satin although four-end broken twill would work well. For satin that weaves satisfyingly to square, I set it at about 30 ends per inch. For twill, the set should be just a hair looser. This is what the cloth looks like. It's supple, thick, and the floats aren't too long. It makes a great kitchen towel. I have several, and all are in heavy use. The cloth is sturdy enough to withstand all manner of torments. This drying mat is two layers of cloth sewn in an envelope, and it is super absorbent and utilitarian. Like all damask in my experience, the cloth sews up brilliantly. I lined this bag with commercial cotton and installed a zipper. It is wonderfully practical and durable. You can see that the scale of the units within the structure makes for bold statement pieces. The design on this wall hanging can be appreciated from way across a large room. This is because with a set of 30 EPI, 5 end satin units are more than an eighth of an inch square. For a nice sized 5 end satin towel with a finished width of about 19 inches, we can include up to about 150 units in our design. This is a practical number for single pulls if you are so inclined. 16-2 cotton next. This is my go-to warp for everyday table linens, upholstery with wool, supplemental wefts, and experiments with new structures. If I were only allowed to have one kind of cotton to work with, this would be my choice. It is incredibly versatile, and the nature of the fabric it weaves can change enormously with just a few minor tweaks. A linen weft, for example, really shines. I like to set it at 30 EPI or a little closer for plain weave including lace and 46 EPI for 5 and 6 end satin damask. Here is a nice rustic napkin, my favorite napkin for pizza and movie night as it happens, made from a 16-2 cotton warp and weft. Structure is 6 end irregular satin damask. It's thick and sturdy enough to take care of the sort of minor catastrophes that can happen when one is balancing a plate on one's lap. 
set at 46 ends per inch, we have available to us about 160 pattern units in 20-inch napkins on the loom. This gives us a lot of pixels to play with during the design phase. What is fascinating to me is the huge change brought on when we weave 5-end satin instead of 6. This is the same 16-2 warp and weft, but look at how smooth the structure is, and how drapey and supple the cloth. I wish you could feel these two pieces side by side. The 5-end satin is thinner, shinier, altogether more sophisticated and refined. I think the difference in the two structures is quite remarkable. We can squeak a few more units into our designs as well, a little over 9 per inch instead of 7.5 with the 6 end version. 16.2 is a really nice choice for plain weave. This Opemta bag was woven with a 16.2 cotton warp and a number 16 singles linen weft, 16.2 linen for the supplemental patterning. This cloth has a great hand and sews together like a dream. It would make wonderful pillowcases. 16-2 is also perfect for lace, as in this lace Bronson napkin with a number 16 singles linen weft. I think a set of 30 ends per inch works well for lace and love the result. It is special enough to pull out of the drawer on fancy occasions. The scale of the design is somewhat large because each pattern unit contains six threads. We need to take this into account at design time. My 13-inch napkins, for example, contain only 73 pattern units. Finally, my absolute favorite warp for Ooh La La linens, 32 cotton, which clocks in at an impressive 12,000 yards per pound. It's not exactly sewing thread, but it is fine enough that, when woven with an identical weft, it makes cloth suitable for the most delicate applications. Even when woven in 6 end satin, it is smooth and supple. I set it at about 69 ends per inch, giving me a whopping 11.5 units per inch on the loom. You can't really tell by looking, but this cloth is smooth and supple enough for fine linens and sewn objects. The scale and detail of the designs we can muster is very satisfying for a lover of fussy, complicated patterns like me. I love working with this yarn, and have pretty much devoted my Ula Cyrus to long, long warps of it. It's getting a bit difficult to find, especially the dyed variety, but it is well worth seeking out when you want to push the boat out. Which brings me to a question I've been getting lately as I churn out pieces on this warp. Isn't cotton this fine hard to work with? Doesn't it break and abrade and snag and stick to itself and cause all sorts of problems in the shallow draw loom shed? Well, I've been weaving with it for a while now and wouldn't say it's particularly difficult to use, although I have learned a few techniques along the way that have proved helpful for taming the beast. Although many of these tips are helpful for all kinds of weaving, I find them particularly important for wrangling fine threads on the draw loom without the use of hairspray, sizing, or special edge treatments of any kind. Tip 1. Wind the warp holding multiple threads in your hand. I do this no matter what or where I am weaving, but I can't begin to imagine the trouble that might come from a one-by-one -one cross using this thread. For one thing, that would be a lot of passes. My 18-inch napkins required over 1,300 threads, and the fewer trips up and down the mill, the better. For this 6 end satin warp, I held three threads in my hand while I was winding for a 3x3 three three cross. This is insanely helpful when threading heddles, because each leash contains exactly two passes, and ends travel through the leash sticks much more smoothly when they are not traveling alone. Tip 2. Thread multiple warp ends through each pattern heddle. There's no need to waste a heddle on each thread. I have found with this fine stuff it's better to thread each end discreetly between the ladders rather than have them all share the eye. If there is any sort of twist happening in the warp it is kept safely behind the heddles. Crochet hook or similar is helpful for the procedure and it doesn't take nearly as much time as you might think. 
Corollary to this procedure is that, when I advance the warp, I do a double check to make sure the heddles haven't been drawn towards the front of the loom by a little snag or twist. I like to do a spot check to make sure all the pattern heddles move freely on the warp. This ensures the shed is able to open unencumbered. Tip 3. Keep the lee sticks below the back beam. Normally, I keep my lee sticks in front of the back beam where I can keep an eye on them. But with these threads, which tend to stickiness and, let's face it, breaking, I like to maximize the area behind the pattern heddles. This allows me to eke a few precious extra inches out of my setup. Tip 4. Weave with the beater close to the ground shafts. With these threads, I move my beater to the back of its cradle and leave it there for the duration. This enables me to weave where the shed is deepest and helps minimize abrasion on the warp. Tip 5 is related to this. Keep the fell line as close to the ground shafts as possible. On this loom, that means fairly close to the beater as it hangs in its neutral position. The weaving sweet spot may be smaller and the warp needs to be advanced more often, but it maximizes the size of the shed and helps overcome the thread's natural stickiness. Tip 6. Use a temple. Advance it often. This is vital. Although it might seem counterintuitive to stick sharp, pointy objects into our fine warp, judicious use of a temple might well be the single biggest factor in weaving these stretchy, densely set threads. I weave for no more than an inch, and sometimes less, before advancing the temple. Tip 7. Weave with high tension something else that might seem wrong, but I find that high tension is critical for sound, well-made damask. I actually crank mine until the wheel objects and goes no further. I could bounce a quarter off my warps. This is what it sounds like when I thwack it with my hand. And with the beater. Tip 8. Beat on a closed shed after changing the shed. We've already maximized our chance of success, working where the shed is at its deepest with high tension and a temple, and when we press the treadle, our shed will open cleanly more often than not. But it can happen that some threads insist on sticking. Hitting these with a shuttle traveling at speed has predictable results. I use the same trick I learned for sticky tow linen warps. Throw the shuttle on an open shed, beat, chain sheds with the beater forward, and tap the fell line again to clear the shed. It works like a charm. The goal of this video was to provide useful information for newer draw loom weavers thinking about how typical stash cotton can be used for awesome draw loom projects. With just a few different yarns at our disposal, we can create a wide variety of textiles and projects and never run out of design possibilities. I find endless inspiration in the simplest of materials and hope you will too.